Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to Savage Reads. I have some books that I'm super excited to talk about today. I read some really good ones this last week and I also finished my project and got it hanging up in the house. So I will put some pictures up. The project turned out okay. I'm pretty happy with it and I like where it's hanging up for now. So I had a good time, but I couldn't stop thinking about embroidery, so I did start on some other projects. My new projects that I'm working on are a little bit smaller scale. I'm thinking of doing a series of nature embroideries in letter size paper size, right? So I figure it should be pretty easy to find a frame that would work with these. It shouldn't be hard if I want to give these away as gifts or anything like that. It should be a pretty standard size and I'm going to do that. So this is the one that I started on um, this last week. So I did all these daisies, which I'm pretty happy with. These trees didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but they're okay. I really like how these trees turned out though. I was really happy with those ones and I'm just gonna fill in the rest of it. I watercolored the back of it because I'm hoping that I won't feel like I need to fill in any negative space here because it'll kind of look like dirt. I don't know. I'm trying out some new things, but I'm excited to start in on some new projects, but that's what I'm doing creatively. And let's jump into the books that I have read this last week. The first book that I want to talk about was a recommendation from Caitlin over at Bandy's Books. And this is called The Jin Waits A Hundred Years by Jabnam Khan. This book is following a beautiful mansion in South Africa and it is on the coast and it is wonderful and elegant and it is following back in the past the family that originally lived there and their history and then current day when it's run down but people are still living there and the house is a big character in this. It's very moody, magical realism. If you like these character driven figuring out tragedy with elements of magical realism and the ghosts that we carry with us. I think this book was really well done for that. However, some of the elements of magical realism, the house was somewhat alive, but there was this gin. The gin itself, I never felt like was super fleshed out and could have been taken out of the story and not changed much of anything. I thought this book was pretty well done, but there were some aspects that weren't super successful. I enjoyed it other than just that little thing. This recommendation I got from the channel Triumphal Reads, and it was Our Native Bees, North America's Endangered Pollinators, and The Fight to Save Them by Paige Embry. And this book was fascinating. It does exactly what it says in the title. It is going through different kinds of bees that are native to North America, and how honeybees aren't native to North America, but they do a lot of the pollinating. It talks about the different kinds of pollinators. It talks about different kinds of communities of bees and where they live and what climates work well for them, what is killing the bees, what can help the bees. It goes through all sorts of aspects, but it's also not that long of a book. You feel like you get a pretty good overview of the different types of bees and pollinators in North America in a short amount of time. It made me so much more interested in learning more about the different insects and the ecosystems because this book managed to make it super engaging. So highly recommend. I did enjoy this. And one beautifully key thing that this book did is it made me feel less bad when I haven't weeded my yard because, hey, it's probably good for the pollinators. So I have a good excuse to not keep my yard perfect and weed free it's fine. Now, Caitlin at Bandy's Books also recommended the book My Side of the River by Elizabeth Camarillo Gutierrez. This is Elizabeth's memoir and experiences growing up as a daughter of immigrants who were forced to go back to Mexico when she was 15. It talks about their struggles, their lives, the difficulties of living with that uncertainty about immigration status, and how she overcame a lot of really difficult things to get to where she is in life. Now, this book was inspiring and frustrating and really important in that 
it showed a lot of the reality of these types of situations. I thought it was great at not being too sensationalized. It was very much her story and I thought it was really well done for the most part. My only slight critique of the book is that I think often with memoirs you need a little bit more time to be able to process the events in your life and I think that she wrote this a little young and so while the story itself was really interesting we don't really get the process of what it means going forward and I think that a little bit more time would have really benefited this book but I think the story itself was powerful enough that I highly recommend that you read it. I think it was really good. I just think it may have benefited from another five, 10 years of her being able to work through things and then look back on it. If she wrote in five or 10 years, a little paper about how she has processed things beyond this book, I would be super interested because I do think that she was very close to a lot of the events in this book. I thought that she did do a very good job though at presenting the facts in her life in a very understanding way, understanding these difficult family dynamics and being able to talk about them and the context of the events that were happening politically, nationally, at the same time that influenced how she lived her life was really important. So this was a great one, highly recommend. Now, the last book I want to talk about was excellent. Five stars, highly recommend. Melinda over at A Web of Stories recommended the book King A Life by Jonathan Ake. And this was a fantastic biography. This is following the full life of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And it is so well researched. And it is the first of its kind that has some of the recently declassified FBI files on Martin Luther King Jr. So it has a lot of information that the public might not have known, but also so much research talking to all the people who knew him and really getting a really in-depth picture of his life. And this is detailing his activism, his personal life, his multiple infidelities, and his commitment to a cause that seemed hopeless at times. I think the author did a great job at not over sensationalizing some of the things that definitely could have been a bit of salacious gossip, but also not shying away from them, being very honest about who this man was and the things that he did and presenting us with all the facts, but also really humanizing King and making us feel like even though you may not agree with everything he did, you understand him as a person and you understand the causes and the philosophy that he subscribed to. You could really understand his strong moral stance, even when he didn't always live up to all the morals that he preached and his struggle with his mental health through really trying times. I thought it was very interesting to talk about these FBI files because it is crazy that we have these FBI files because the FBI was targeting King and spying on his personal life and trying to discredit him and trying to sell these stories to the newspapers when this was a private citizen and they spied on him for very dubious reasons. And that kind of overreach from an organization is kind of scary. And so I thought that that was a really interesting thing to look at. And I did appreciate that it talked about the women in his life. And a lot of times they are overlooked and overshadowed. And they were some of the pillars of the civil rights movement. I think that the author gave a very broad look. This is a long book, but I couldn't put it down. I finished it in like two days. I needed <laughs> to finish the whole thing. I just highly recommend. It was excellent. Just so exhaustively researched. You know that that guy talked to anybody who had ever talked to King. It, at times in this book, it was so frustrating to see that a lot of the causes that Martin Luther King Jr. was fighting for are still problems today and what changes have happened, but also how much further there is to go. And I thought that it was 
inspiring and difficult and very humanizing. And that is what I have read the past week or so. It has been a great week for nonfiction. And if you have any thoughts on these books, please let me know in the comments down below. And I will be back soon with another book wrap up.